Well, the talisman has guided us here, and hopefully to the location of the next piece of the key. And fortuitously, on the day of the masquerade of the Reaper, it does feel strange to be queuing to get into a party, especially here in the League. I've been away for far too long, it seems. Ah, and we seem to be in the right place. It's our friend from Birmingham. Looks like she's trying to skip this line. This should be very amusing. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, young miss, please come straight through. Wait! What? Who is this woman? And more importantly, who is her tailor? Elegant yet flamboyant. Fabulous. I guess while we wait, where did I start the next chapter of the Noobs at Lark? Hello and welcome to the Lark News podcast. We recently got back from E1. E1, yeah. E1 and, of um, 2019. It's just strange to be doing this <clears throat> again. and um, A year on. A year on. It's like, it's weird. When I think back to last year and when we both decided to do this... And it was, I think of all the places like LARP's taken me, mm-hmm. you know, and the things like it's opened up in what I have experienced, what I've done, what I've risked, what I've kind of uh, just gained as like reward from it. Mm-hmm. it it's really, it, yeah, it's it's a, it's a strange experience to go from where I was to where <clears> I am <throat> and how I feel about it now. I, tell you, I really didn't think about it too much yeah. until we got back from E1. Yeah. We'll probably get to, I'll probably talk about that at the end probably, but. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff I digested during E1 after like having spent like what three ep- three three uh, seasons in. Yes, yeah. It's yeah. feels like a long way. Now we're looking back. Yeah, I mean, I guess we should. This is the pre lark segment, so mm-hmm. uh, here we'll go over uh, the things we did before going to LARP. We'll just go through a quick stuff to do with the podcast. Yeah, it's boring, I think it's a good time, and yeah. then we'll just yeah. we'll blast for it. So. I had a good winter. I got yeah. to do loads of different interviews. Even want to go to a different LARP. It's been pretty busy. It's I think been that's been time. really fun, right? Because I mean, obviously, we have these conversations and stuff. And I think there's, you know, us talking from an area of like almost total ignorance yeah. in some respects is always like you know something Let we enjoy. Way, the absolute benefit from well, from my point of view, especially like going to see like people like the PD crew and talking to them about Matt stuff. Pennington, Matt Pennington, Claire Evans, yeah. you know, David Kimball White. It's it's just yeah, Graham, yeah. And, and awesome. even the photographers, oh, even the know, photographers. And stuff, like, right? so, like, so from my point of view, it's been a real absolute blast going off and chatting to people who uh, yeah. I'm actually interested in just sitting down and talking to. I so. mean, even on, like, you know, I had the episode with Robert and, like, talking to him, mm-hmm. uh, you know, again, like, something I would maybe never have done, like, I, you know, this whole podcast kind of opened me up to things like that. And I think this whole hobby has opened me up to doing more things that yeah. maybe I would never foresee myself Pretty doing. Fun. Um, we even set up a, we set up a Patreon, so now... People are giving us a few bucks to uh, help. Yeah, it, I mean it's amazing, awesome. right? That's 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 crazy to think that people do. Back, to be honest, <clears throat> it's it's really humbling, really nice, yeah. really appreciate it, guys. Um, just yeah, really awesome. Yeah, yeah. let's move yeah. on from that. Yeah. Um, right. So, um, oh, thank you very much. If I didn't say so. Oh, let's get to let's talk about your armor and stuff. Yeah, I guess that's the big thing, right? I've hinted at it a, lot, a bunch of times um, mm-hmm. that I've been working on some lamlar armor because right. um, previously made I'd made like a a sort of a jack of plates kind of thing or kind of like a, a weird bastard version of a, I guess you call it brigadine or uh, something like that and it's like that's been Brig- all right brigadine yeah it's basically it's essentially a leather jacket with metal plates ordinary those go behind the leather jacket right and uh, it's kind of riveted on from mm-hmm. the front uh, but then I kind of inverted and had the metal plates on the front of the jacket which is not really historically anything right um, but it looks fucking. It looked awesome. all right, right? But the yeah. thing was, it was just like doing that had opened me up to really trying to do something else. And mm-hmm. I got shot by an arrow once and went down. And then I thought, well, heavy armor is very good. So I thought, well, I'm going to make myself some heavy armor. I don't want to have a breastplate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just give it a go and yeah, actually try and craft something. So I settled on making lamlar armor, which uh, there's various types of it, but. <laughs> I, 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 went, I definitely hadn't heard of it before you started working yeah, on it. It's kind of like Viking uh, sort of heavy armour. So, so describe how it's it. made. So it's tiny little bits of metal plate. Yes. So you basically got uh, segmented plates that have uh, holes uniformly drilled into them, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's different forms of it, but I made Lamlar, which is using D plates, which if you imagine, they're literally plates that look like a filled in D, mm. capital D. Uh, there are also things like A plates, which look like a capital a essentially <laughs> right you know and and 
they, they all basically attach together and make a different type of landmark. But uh, it it was just it was it looked like something I could do right or something I'd have the patience to do because it's it, su- it's such a big task though it was a huge endeavor right and something that like this hobby takes you to crazy places dude you've you... gone you've gone to a you've gone to a really you've gone out there right like before E one Ian was messaging me and he was like oh man like the hype's so bad like I really want to go and it's just like I'm so excited about getting there. What, what, God, what, can you imagine what it's like for people more invested than us? <laughs> and I was like, dude, you, you're so you're the that you're the absolute hilt right now. It's it's yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, even beyond the armor. I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it in a bit. But uh, I did things like I wrote a uh, apothecary book, mm. and I made flags for the nation, which was just like such a weird no, and on. crazy inv- thing yeah. to be involved in. We should go through each of those and how you crafted them. Let's go yeah. back to the lamina armor. So, so you have to thread all this. You have to thread yeah. each individual plate together. Plate together. But but it sounds complicated. But essentially, there's a pattern for it, right? And it, you just follow the pattern, mm-hmm. and it's just it, you line them up. You push some essentially paracord through. Or, or leather thonging, and then you just go down the down the line doing that, and then you move on to the next line. It's much like knitting, really, um, but with very big sort of loops. And yeah, you just stitch the whole thing it's together. Just time and effort. Yeah, but what I wanted to do, because um, I, I bought some old lamellar armor from uh, India, and you can buy. I say old, sorry, um, but it's actually sort of cheaply knocked off stuff uh, mm-hmm. they make over there. But it's steel. Um, that was pretty reasonable. It was like a lot cheaper than buying like a, a suit here. Oh, so you bought the actual segments? And no, sorts. I bought the whole suit. Like, oh, but right, okay. basically, they gave you the same price whether you bought it small or extra extra large. Right. And obviously, extra extra large will have more plates in it. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm going to take the whole thing apart and use all of the plates. So I'll order an extra extra large, and it's I have like I don't know six thousand more. How many, did, how many did you take to make, to make my armor? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Probably four thousand, something like that. Oh, so you can make a whole other one? Maybe, maybe. I'm, I've been. Th- I'm thinking about what else I'm going to do with the other two thousand plates. Um, I mean, my word, that's a lot. Yeah, but it was just like uh, so. I did that, and then the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to spray all of the plates green because I wanted like I didn't. That that was the reason I've already gone to this. To no Yeah, I wanted like again. I felt maybe like shiny plate would be like not very Navar. And you can mm-hmm. go that way, though, actually, having said that. But at the time, I didn't really think of it. So I wanted to make it all green. So the whole thing is undercoated, then sprayed with green paint, and then varnished, mm-hmm. and then threaded together. And that's for all the plates. They all had to be laid out and sprayed. And that was like, that took ages. But yeah, then threading it together is just, that's fairly simple. Uh, and then, yeah, just put a like, leather guard, essentially, around the outside of it. It and, sounds and sort of like it sounds put it all like together. Lot, it was a lot. Um, but weirdly, if I did it in like man hours, it probably wouldn't be that much. Weirdly, but it's like the, uh, yeah, it's like the kind of intensity of doing it, mm-hmm. it creatively, and just sort of trying to navigate that into your normal working life and stuff. Dude, it sounds like a hell of a task. Yeah, but you also made a book. I did. I did. So uh, the other thing I really wanted to do was get some law into a book and maybe put it into the library because I heard there was an anvil library. Mm -hmm. I'm a librarian, so I thought, well, it'd be good to deposit something. Uh, So that sparked this idea of doing an apothecary book because my character's just taken the skill apothecary. Um, So what did you do? Just get, like, pages and pages of the wiki? So on the wiki, uh, it's all just wonderfully written out. Just hats off to whoever wrote all of that because it's just so well done and it's like you're reading a... Uh, an actual kind of uh, thing about herbs, you know, like a herb, an actual herbalist's kind of book. You know, mm-hmm. it's really is it uses like the correct phrasing, and people obviously know a little bit about plants because I don't know anything about plants. They're right. using all the right terminology and stuff. But anyway, what I what I wanted to do was I, I, I basically took stuff off the wiki and reworded it as if obviously I was writing it. Um, in some places, more than others. Wow! Um, so but you yeah. rewrote the whole thing. The whole thing. So the when you get it it's not just the, the wiki pasted in to a file it's like actually written stuff that i've done uh, which basically says exactly the same as what's on the wiki wiki but slightly rephrased i mean this is that's ridiculous it was it took so, three months to so, do that so and then you shrunk it down as well so it's like how big is the book like a oh physically it's like a really small like a6 pocket book yeah, um, and, and I wanted it that small. It's leather bound. Yeah, well, this the, the first one I made was leather bound, and I probably will do them all that way. 
And uh, yeah, then that's kind of riveted together. And it's 113 pages long. It's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> and it was just like, but so much fun <clears throat> to do. I mean, it was one of these things where I really wanted to make a bunch to sell at the event, and we'll get really onto that at the event. But I just only managed to make the one prototype because stuff came up like the day before. I mean, I'd been to Australia for a whole month, like right before this whole thing. So I had no time to work I, on crafting. Do you know what I did for crafting, Ian? What did you do? Do you know what I did for the whole, like, man, you think you think Ian went hard out? Well, guess what I did? Uh, I had some fingerless gloves and, like, a little neck thing. Yeah. So, like, like a little, um, like, cro- crocheted neck thing for my neck to keep me warm. <laughs> Someone else made that for me. And that was really... Yeah. Th- those are really nice, though. They're good, right? Really nice. They're really good. And they're, like... They're like darkish colours or no, they look really colors. good. They look, yeah, they look very nice. Friend of mine, yeah. And uh, also, I got a friend of mine, Derek, to three D print me some teeth. That was really cool. Which uh, I then painted and yeah. then put a string through. <laughs> I had to drill the holes a bit bigger. That's the only thing. <laughs> but like the, the actual three D crafting was outstanding. So yeah, Derek might want to advertise actually because he does do stuff. But yeah, the um, yeah, and that's it. But that I is think... the sum total of my crafting. But like, I don't, I don't know. Like, all of that's really cool, right? Like, you, know you, you enjoy that. Actually, I bought um, some aluminium. Yeah, you did. You, I know you were going to do more. I've got um, all the tools I need, yeah. but all that aluminium's well, all that aluminium. It's not even that much aluminium. Yeah. But I'm sitting there. It's sitting there waiting for me to make the yeah. first. I, I would encourage you to. I think like the reward from doing stuff like that. Um, and I guess it got me thinking more about the reward of doing costuming and armor and stuff like that. Is it something that you wear? So you're literally applying it to your character when you do it. Yeah. You know, so it's like that, that's kind of, you know, oh, it's, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Right. When you add that little touch to your character or whatever, and you, you kind of embody it physically on your character. I think that's a really cool thing to Let do. Let me put this way. My, my favorite things, like the, the necklace. It, yeah, it it's works. great. It's really good it with works. your character. And it's like, it's good for my character. And it's, yeah, really happy with it. Little addition, also adding the, the gloves and the scarf. Yeah. Thing. It just makes me look a bit more of a breaks Always down, prepared, dude. breaks up the gimp armor. Yeah. Bit, you yeah. know, so that's pretty important. Um, yeah. Right. Oh, you went to LarkCon. I did go to LarkCon. That was a really good experience. Um, that, like, we originally were going to all try and go together, a yeah. bunch of us, but um, only I could make it on the day. Yeah. And it was, I was like, I was it was working. a bit of a shame. Yeah, I think I was working. Yeah, yeah I think it just, everything just happened to conspire that yeah. all, everybody said they were going to go for one other reason or you another. You went by go. yourself to Lark. LarkCon. is the, uh, it's like a little... Well, it's quite big. It's, it's quite a, a big bit. kind oh, of, yeah, you... it's like a, a big sports hall in a, or a bunch of sports halls in a, sports facility that have all been booked out and they're just filled with LARPing stuff which ranges from different games that you can go to so like the uh, little advertising they've all got stands. their own little stalls and stuff mm-hmm. and you know profound decisions are there and you can talk about Empire and things um, and that was cool I got to see some of the, the crew members there and so sort of just talk to them and that it's nice to see people who you know maybe like behind the scenes you don't normally see yeah. and like the games just become something like really cool and awesome in my life. So it's just been like, just, it was nice to say thanks did to them. Did you fanboy out? Yeah. I did fanboy about out of it. It was just like, yeah. And then anyway, so then the, the rest of it is, um, selling, you know, sellers who sell things. So, uh, irregular, irregular props were there. Um, and our have, props to a yeah. props, <laughs> as always. Yeah. And, uh, having a lot was there and there <laughs> who I normally use for, for my arrows and stuff, but I actually didn't buy very much. Um, I'd arranged to pick some arrows up from there. Um, but the rest of it was, I think, oh yeah, I bought two shirts as well, which kind of upgraded my soft kit. Mm. That was really good. One from Chow's, and they also have like a bring and buy at LARPCon, where people can just uh, bring and sell or what thing. So people can bring their stuff and then sell it. And there's like a group of people behind a stall who'll sell it for them. And then they give a cut back. That's so awesome. So you can just like sell off old LARP stuff. And it's, you know, a lot of it's just priced really nicely. Like I got like a shirt for like three quid and it's like... You know, it's aged, but it's it's in good nick, and it's like you know, it's a whole soft kit, legit shirt for like three quid. You know, it's really good. I like our characters. The fact is that, well, me anyway, I can I can wear dis- dishevelled shit. Mm. And it's actually a bit better. Yeah, for, I think uh, actually that looks it just on almost every character looks better, right? There's, if yeah. you've got a fully polished piece of armor that says something, oh, but man. seeing that with oh, a little chip, Dawn might be listening, man. Yeah, <laughs> you got to have the shiny. 
But no, I think a little chink is always interesting. It's, uh, it tells a bit of character. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, Larkcom was great. I got to meet uh, the people on the Orcs planet. That was really cool. I kind of I found Boyd out a bit there, actually. That was kind of funny. The, um, is that the Orc planet? Guys? Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, really cool. Yeah, there's a, there's a YouTube channel. We we like them a lot. They're the, <laughs> they're the Ashbourne. Yes, weirdly. Which is amazing. And, uh, but I they're the Orc Ashbourne I couldn't Empire. be happier with some namesakes, yeah. is all I can say yeah. to that. What a, they're great. What a wonderful bunch of folks. Um, yeah, so Orc Planet on YouTube, it's it's worth a Google. Yeah. They um, do, one thing that they have done, which I think has actually been legitimately really good for you and me, uh, being both dyslexic, and we find sometimes the amount of text... Um, I think maybe a bit intimidating. Yeah. So before every like event, you get like the wind of war, the wind of fortune, right? Yeah. And they're kind of like big story blocks that basically explain what's happened between uh, one event and another, right? Yeah. So this will tell you what big battles happened and what the results of that might be, both which mechanically is, and in RP. Which is thanks to those guys. There are a few other people that do them. Yeah. But like, just the guy sat there reads it through. Yeah. And he, so he reads out the whole thing as if he's reading you a story piece and they're pretty well written, right? They're, these are very well written pieces of, of yeah. law and, and they're and read. Well, he narrates it well really well. Read, I yeah. would say really, really nicely done. Damn fine show. And, and that's been really good. So yeah, top props to them. So anyway, it was great to see them. And uh, just, I talked them out on my armor and stuff because they also have recently got, I think armchair armory, which is a really cool, a site for sort of buying plates and stuff from and oh, yeah. uh they're, yeah they're great they're great so um yeah just that was really 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 rewarding to to meet them i also actually bumped into uh my two eurozen friends from uh, crystal skies yeah and that was it was so weird i could actually give them a hug it was like because <laughs> eurozen have this thing where you can't touch them physically so you wanted there was a need so no but they, he just straight away said um give us a hug and so it was good it was cool it was like because like it's such a weird thing as like interacting with a Eurozen as a friend, because uh, you can't touch them, and you I, like I, I forget how much of my interpersonality is like a handshake or a pat on the shoulder or something. Yeah. Like, like how much of communication I do is that, and my instinct to do that. It's like the Joe Biden of. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was really good fun. So I saw them, and they also had like a, a LARP um, awards thing after, uh, but I didn't uh, didn't stay long enough for that. But they had like a whole. Oh, shit. Remember, so Claire Evans had won a LARP award, okay? Yes, yeah. So I googled some of my prep for that episode about, like, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the Nightmare guy. Yeah. The guy that hosted Nightmare. Well, yeah. Well, the, we have to win a, a LARP award. <laughs> they might have him back. Right. Cambian horns. Yeah, so uh, that was just... Um, the other thing I wanted to do was, if my character died, um, I, I talked before about being a Naga which is essentially like people from the night realm. They're essentially like cockatrice kind of Trixie. humanoids. Trixie yeah. folk. Uh, but I, I changed away from that and went for, I'm going to say it wrong again, Cambian. Cam- Cambian? Cambian, I think it is, yeah. And um, and that's basically sort of, you have like uh, ram-style horns. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're a bit kind of... Uh, Cunning, I suppose. Yeah, there's and like RP like, effects yeah, of being yeah, this, lineage, this lineage. But anyway, the reason I wanted to do that was um, if I die, I figure it would be an easy way to sort of demonstrate visu- visually that I'm a different character. So I got these uh, sort of plastic horns that are essentially on a, a headband, mm-hmm. uh, sprayed them up bronze, and then I used some tarnishing kind of uh, sort of powder essentially to sort of add like a faint uh, sort of patina to them. Mm-hmm. So it's like kind of rusted out. Uh, and that's just all for like the character. The idea would be that you know he was kind of lost behind enemy lines, and he's kind of been tortured and sort of messed trapped while he was out there. Uh, so he, he's like aged a bit. That sounds tragic, Ian. Yeah, there's another pretty, tragic backstory. But yeah, so I wanted to go for that. But yeah, that was really good fun. Uh, it's sort of and and uh, just going a little bit down the lineage game, even though Talus is still alive. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, yeah, well at this point anyway. And um... <laughs> yeah, well, we we yeah we talked a lot about who would die. Yeah. There will be deaths. There yeah. There will be deaths. Yeah. So Bung's eye. That was really so, interesting. Yeah. So our friend Bung, he's um, he's been going with us, you know. From the beginning. From the beginning. Yeah. And um, he, wonderful, he does all the, the wonderful the... man who does the intros and outros yeah. for each episode. Yeah. Um, the, he decided that he was going to try and, like, while he's away doing his thing on the trods. Yeah. 
he gets into a fight with a is it a Cambrian? No, a changeling. A changeling. Who are yeah. the little pointy? They've horns. got more like stag horns. Yeah, and he said he's going to say that he headbutted said uh, whatever changeling, uh, changeling. Yeah. and it took his eye out took his eye out so he decided to get this I mean it's, it's like a white contact lens it's a essentially. white contact lens but it's like misted right yeah so it gives the impression he's got like cataracts or something yeah like. but his eye's been sort of blotted out yeah um, when he got that in yeah I mean like, and he added like a little scar to his face to show where obviously it sort of hit you across the cheek. It was cool. It was just like yeah, yeah. Bung really when it, especially with the makeup, he goes like all out. Like yeah. his tattoos are always the he's, best. He's our makeup man for sure. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, he really uh, nails it just on like the look. Uh, and also, when, the when, fact he had to fight the whole time was with one eye. Yeah, buggered. Yeah, because you can't see out of it very well. So the whole thing is like you you're basically fighting in. You know, with no depth perception. I think that was a really interesting challenge for him to suddenly have like his depth perceptions kind of fucked with. Yeah, that he, was that was great. I think like Bung is great at really kind of, as I say, pushing. Well, pushing that envelope of uh, yeah. how you can make your your physical appearance be. I mean, I'm yeah. sure there are people out there that do like crazy things with latex. Yeah, and like like body art stuff that's yeah. like absolutely bonkers. super duper kick ass. Yeah, right? or like I, I've seen a like. Navar's tattoo or war paint game yeah. is pretty good. Ours is like, we'll do a nice little tattoo shape and yeah. do a couple of bits. It normally curves around the eye, doesn't it? And then comes down to the to the front of the face. Yeah, battle, get a bit of the old, you know, the army boot polish stuff out and then just yeah. dab a few bits here and there. Some people go out there with like these really intricate, intricate yeah. like beautifully well-crafted designs. We need to we need to up our uh, tattoos game. Need to Again. get up earlier. That's what we need to do. But oh, it's difficult. Like that, rough, that how people find Especially the time. Especially when it's cold. Like who wants to get up when it's cold early? Well, I mean that that was the other thing. The uh, the weather conditions leading into it. Mm-hmm. You know. Again, really really. It nice. has been really nice the week before, and then as is always the way. As is as is the inevitability of E one basically. Yeah. Just but I yeah we'll get in, we'll get into the weather. So like, what? We'll it more wasn't that actual. bad. We'll get to that. But, yeah, it um, wasn't that bad. I guess it was just because it. Well, did we didn't get the worst week. of it. Let me no, put it that we way. did not get the worst of it yeah there were people that really suffered um yeah so um oh dave shield dave shield was a big one. Oh, um, jealousy yeah you so... green-eyed monster <laughs> oh how i know what you are now so our friend uh robert um who did the crafting episode with me on i think episode 14 i think it's episode 14 wow good knowledge. um yeah he's just he's been a really good friend uh to us and and, and um Dave, other Dave, good Dave. Good Dave. Um, got in touch with him and they basically worked on a design for a shield together. <laughs> and Dave made him, sorry, uh, Robert made him this uh, really, really beautiful So, so it's, on, it's on Navarre Brief, right? Yeah, like in really this, on In the Navarre story brief. of how Navarre shields are meant to look, yeah. that's how it looks. Which How would you describe it? So it's like essentially a very accentuated kite shield with sort of cutouts it's got beautiful curves yeah it's it kind of yeah it essentially imagine a, a kite shield that has like, like um some sort of bits cut out of it mm-hmm. but it maintains that shape and and uses the curves of those cuts to it's fantastic make a nice design. it's got the it's Aspawn great. logo it's flap straight Lamb on the front it. yeah it's great and it's like we i think everyone was envious of that shield i mean it's just gorgeous um after i went i went with my little yeah, you crappy shield one, this time yeah. around. I need to have a word with Robert. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> he did say. I think he said to Good Dave, <clears throat> he'll never make one like it. No, yeah, I think that's really cool. Actually, hold I on. Know. Yeah, let me talk to Robert. Okay. Yeah. Let's just have a conversation. <laughs> see what we can work out. See what's going to happen. You know what I mean? But I think that the cool thing Robert does is that yeah, each one is individual <clears throat> and each one's unique, and it's he kind gorgeous. of lets you explore your character within it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why, like, going back to when I had my uh, uh, cloak made. It was the fact that when I was working with the um, uh, the person to make it, uh, Kate, it was like she kind of let me express on my character into the design and then mm-hmm. made something essentially custom for me. And I think that's been that's a really cool thing that getting, people who are in that hobby getting custom gear. It I looks mean, so good, dude. When you talk about like being aspirational, I yeah. feel like we've got enough to walk on the field now, right? Yeah, we're having a good time, but there's always this like. Man, I wish I'd like to get this a bit better, or that yeah. could be a bit better. Like yeah, my legs, yeah. my legs in. I need to get my legs sore. Yeah, you kind of. Yeah, it's weird how you think about kit after a while, I say, because it sort of it expresses you in the world 
and you become attached to it and also you become aware of you know the weaknesses in it and the things you'd like to improve and you know you know my version of talus would have this in my mind Mm -hmm. and you know real world talus or uh, real world in anvil talus doesn't right Mm -hmm. so like yeah it's it's weird the ways it'll take you for sure for Mm -hmm. sure yeah, I mean, uh, I still need to work on a lot of my stuff and basically draw character from that. I'm sure. Well, no, do you know what? My character's starting to settle down. I think Hitman's a really interesting character, actually. I think I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah. Right, um, and then, what? Well, finally, we're getting to... We've got new people coming with us. Yes. Yeah, that was a really interesting thing to have. So, um, yeah, last time we had, what was it? Dave, good Dave, came and joined us. Yep. was the last new yeah. person we had. This time around, we had Dave's good Dave's brother, yeah. Michael. yeah. He came to join us. Yeah. Um, always a bit weird having someone coming to join you that you don't know coming to LARP. Yes. Turned out he's a better looking, nicer version of Good Dave. So Good Good Dave almost. Double Good. Or just like... Dave's brother, yeah. yeah Dave's brother. <laughs> it's yeah. like awesome. No, yeah, he just fitted in so well. Uh, and uh, I think it's it's just like... He I actually, think LARP brings it out in people. loved it. I mean, it was a really good time. And then we had uh, our friend Lloyd. Yeah. Lloyd came, which it was it was great to have him along. Like me and Lloyd known each other for yeah, ages. Yeah, we should talk about a little bit about Lloyd's journey in. He was like, it really. He, I mean, I, I think he was a bit dubious at first, right? Yeah. So, like, well, basically, it starts with you know, obviously, he knows that I, I'm part of this hobby. I don't think he was probably that interested. But then, on a card journey up to a gaming <laughs> convention that we all went to, EGX, uh, I just started like. So you sat next to the guy. I literally sat next to him. We're driving, and it's like you know, a two and a half, three hour long journey. And I'm just constantly talking about PD. LARP. PD should just pay you to ride public transport and just talk to people about LARP. And it's just... you are a sick pusher. Man. <laughs> I just I just whacked on about it without even realizing for pretty much the whole journey mm-hmm. and then the whole way back. And then like I think like the next day or something was like yeah all right I'll do it. <laughs> like I didn't, it was not even my intention really to convince him to do it. Yeah, you do. Um, you you are quite the. Um... I don't know, like the preacher when it comes to... Uh... Yeah, it's just been really good. Like, really good for me. I've definitely uh, benefited from doing it. And mm-hmm. uh, it's just so much fun. Hey, it's just crazy fun. Lloyd was awesome fun to have yeah, along. having Lloyd along was amazing. Just, I think they both fitted in really well. Yeah. Right. Growing a bit bigger and seeing what that's kind of like, especially with new people, like showing yeah. them what the, the ropes are like when we're actually at the event. Well, importantly, and, and we'll repeat this when we get to the actual event, but we also, uh, Lloyd got like a five meter bell tent. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we've got <laughs> a five meter bell tent. Which was crazy. So we had like, okay. a, we've got a four, the four meter bell tent that, that um, me and Dave had originally, which bungles in. And then uh, Good Dave was out in his own little tent outside previously. Yeah, and now we've way. got a five meter bell tent. So it's like, it's a, a, and a the, three meter the, the awning. The difference but, between a four meter and a five yeah, meter is crazy. Is ludicrous. Yeah, I think if you can, I, I think go big. Yeah, go big. But bigger is better in this situation. I mean, it was great. Four meters. I was quite happy with the space we had in a four meter belt yeah. tent, and now it's like, yeah, shit. Yeah. Now I know yeah. five is like it's going from <laughs> it's going from standard definition to high definition. I know. I know. It's crazy. But yeah, so having both the tents and having like the awning between and just getting that as a setup in our minds before we even went, uh, I think it was really cool having extra people come along like mm-hmm. and fill those sort of that spot and, and pad it out in that way. Like the Ashbourne being bigger, I think, was a really cool it thing. Was, it was so cool. Like we started talking about at the start of this episode about how a year on things yeah. are slightly, slightly different now and having new people coming along and like yeah. experiencing LARP. And you trying to kind of like translate what you think of LARP or or, or, or how to yeah, interact with the world? Yeah, and 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 the fact is that I'm coming from like a really uh, you know weak area of knowledge, right? I'm like, I'm just giving you the Ian version of what I think and feel about it. I get the feeling it must be a little intimidating sometimes when because we know people like we're not we don't know people, but we, yeah. we're friendly. We're on friendly terms with a bunch of people now, right? Yeah. Like um, I know who different people are, and we can go. It and just gives you a, a massive advantage. And, yeah, so and I just think confidence it can be quite, wise. It's quite daunting when oh, you're it's around. It's hugely that. daunting. Yeah. Um, but yeah. luckily, like like ducks to water, they were, weren't they? Was yeah. I mean, well, I mean, we'll get into them more when we actually hit the proper line. Yeah. But yeah, like they they just did fantastic all weekend, and I. Yeah, I think that they all loved it, and I think we're all making fans free too already. Um, it, but we should we should save a lot of that. Yeah, I think it's proper. time. I think it's time. Well, I, always... I, the other thing I wanted to go into was um, the flagpoles that I made. Oh yeah, shit. Okay. So 
uh, and that was the other uh, and the flags that go on them actually uh, and that oh. that was the other big Sorry. thing of what I did yeah. uh, and it was amazing right so you made flags for the different groups that yeah are and this just came out but this came from nowhere so it basically just started uh, I, a long time ago I'd done the flags for our striding which is literally just like a burning tree in a black circle mm-hmm. and I print off we've got these two flags printed and made and they hang up above our awning and we've just had them kicking about um, there was a push by um, I'm just gonna get his name right um, Martin Thomas on the Navarre group to mm. sort of try and get some more funding uh, to do some more stuff with the Navarre camp in general. I originally just get some benches in and sort of uh, put a button, I think a bin down and stuff like that and, and some other things basically just to literally further improve the Navarre camp after the fireball we got that time which again was a massive yeah, it's awesome. thing. Like the Navarre camp looks amazing now. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. But uh, as part of that there came like the idea of you know what else could we do and uh, a couple of people floated an idea about making some flags that represent the different groups so and that so people can use those flags as like staging points to have those various meetings mm. so randomly i just sort of said oh I, I could probably make those and i without really thinking i thought to be honest with you when i put myself forward for it i thought a bunch of other people would say oh i'll you know i'll do that and then I would just immediately buckle Why before their superior. That? Why would you ever think that? Like you stepped up from an outsider's point of view because I didn't talk to you while you're doing it. You just were like, "I got this." <laughs> well, that, that was that really wasn't like the end. But anyway. But it, it just it, it it worked out just to be really good fun. Like you know, another excuse to pour into the wiki and look at the different groups and things and talk to people and just work on various designs and then I would post up a few designs on the Facebook group and people responded to them. It was just a really rewarding, like crazy to me being like, I mean, Talis is like a nobody at this point, especially uh, in the VAR, right? You know, and I'm like not the most outgoing player or anything like that. So to like, to suddenly like for me to be making the flags for the nation, uh, it was like a real, like, just like crazy thing to be involved with. It filled me like, like like a lot of pride in a sense and to see them when we got to the event and they were flying and you the had, crazy wind. You had a big weekend actually thinking about it. You just saying that has made me realise you're a... Yeah. You're a god. Talis is an interesting kind you're, of character right now in a sense. A, you are a hero, Ian. <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, oh, one but more that thing. Was great fun. One more thing. I, um, I brewed vodka. I, met, oh, I yeah. got some vodka and I infused it. Was it apple and ginger? Yeah. And no, it was apple and cinnamon. Yes, that was it. Yeah, and pineapple and ginger. And ginger yeah, right. But Didn't I got distracted <laughs> while I was doing it. And bear in mind, I've gone through like a lot of stages for this. So I've like sanitized everything yeah, I'm yeah. using. You did amazing. I've got like I, I really I really go to town. It is yeah. a sterile environment. Yeah. I do all of this effort. For me to then switch the ingredients as I'm doing it, and I do both jar like all four jars without even batting an eyelid about it. I just did it, and I was like, I was as lying, it... I was lying in bed that night, and I was like, something wasn't sitting right with me. And I was like, what? and then it just, oh shit, you know. Yeah. So I, yeah. I like, yeah, jumped up and like went to have a look, and yeah, I'd done it in the wrong way. I'd done pineapple and cinnamon and apple and ginger. But actually, and uh, tasting pretty good, I thought. I but mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when you get to your selling. Yeah, I've got but... a load of stuff to talk about with trading. Yeah, and generally trying to make. Money. You definitely got a lot more stuck into that this time round, and uh, that like seemed it. like a lot of fun. I like it because it gives you an opportunity to just go and randomly chat to different groups. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's good. But um, yeah, beyond that, um, the only other other thing I did, made was make the actual flagpoles themselves to put the flags on. Mm-hmm. Um, this is pretty ridiculous. It was just great. It was it was just really good fun leading into it. You went so it. hard out this year. It's, I mean, the mind boggles, buddy. Yeah, I mean, like I feel like I just chucked a bunch of stuff in at the beginning uh, of the event, and it was just like a relief to get there. And then I just enjoyed the weekend a hell of a lot. I mean, a hell of a lot. Right, let's get on with it yeah. then. Um, join us next time, and we'll actually talk about the LARP proper. Ah, here we are. Us next. Let me do the talking. Invitations, please. Invitations? Ah, yes, of course. It's in my pocket right here, or this pouch. Um, It was just here, I assure you. Please move to the back of the line. Wait, wait. Surely there's some sort of arrangement we can come to. Okay, okay. Let me go find my invitation. Blast! Time to get creative. Maybe there's an invitation just around this corner. Ah, here's one. 
To you, it may just look like a brick. But you'd be surprised at how many places you can get into with one. Quick, give me a bunk up!